Как вы думаете, каждому ли человеку подвластна магия? That cannot be answered unequivocally, whether anyone can or cannot. Potentially, each person possesses magical abilities, but they're revealed only in the correct application. And we can call this correct application a tradition. For example, in some traditions, your power will reveal itself, but it may conceal itself in others. In very rude conventional terms, tradition is a sort of egregorial system, let's call it that way. It can also be a set of different egregors that exist by and possess specific rules. If the consciousness functions according to these rules, then the individual consciousness and the egregor, or the sum of the egregors that we conventionally will call tradition, come into resonance with one another and begin to reinforce each other. In particular, tradition strengthens the person and supports the development of his specific natural qualities. And if this tradition, by its rules, does not forbid magic as such, then the magical abilities begin to evolve in the way required by the tradition. I emphasize, required by the tradition, and not by you or your personal beliefs. It is good if your abilities happen to match the tradition, but it may also happen that they don't. Tradition in this context, within the framework of our current operating system, in which most of us still are, is a bit stronger than a person, than individuality. However, we are actively working to turn that around. Tradition, within the egregorial system, adds its pressure, forcing a person to deal with it especially if the person is weak-minded. And in this case, it is absolutely normal that a person will seek a tradition that will support him, including a magical tradition. What is a magical tradition? It is a specific school, a worldview, a religion, a certain order. It is everything that has to do with the mystical view of reality and the attempts to put this mystical view as the root cause and the rest of the manifested reality as a consequence and not the other way around. In this way, any person can develop magical abilities if he correctly finds the source of his own teachings, teachings for his own magic. Because magical manifestation is an energetic manifestation. However, we've already established that it is the information that comes first, which means that for this energy manifestation not to be sporadic or spontaneous, not to be a one-time search, but a continuously acting force, this magical manifestation will necessarily require informational support. And in magic, informational support implies a certain teaching or some magical nucleus, magical information, which is always the essence, the connection of a force with an even greater force. And this even greater force we call the gods, otherworldly forces, other minds, meaning something that greatly exceeds the abilities of an average human mind, which unfortunately is constrained by biological conditions. So a person, through an egregor, through tradition, connects with a specific force that gives him access to a constant informational current via this tradition. And this constant informational current doesn't allow the energy to die down. This is how a magical manifestation of a person comes about. When we look at a person like that, we say that he got magic, he has magical abilities. However, the nature of these magical abilities lies in constant informational nourishment. A person will get the energy himself. The most important thing for him is to have the information to get this energy for. Tradition regulates this process as a mediator. For example, it can include the principle of sin and holiness and the principle of good and evil. So if you follow the rules of your tradition, the source of information becomes inexhaustible. It flows continuously through you, thereby giving you a magical manifestation. If you break the rules, 
This source may get shut down. And tradition indeed has this ability. In religion, it's called observing religious commandments and rules. In magic orders, it's called the proper and timely performance of traditionally adopted rituals. Meaning that the rules depend on the egregor. Therefore, if you ask this question related to yourself, am I wasting my time developing magical abilities that I may not even have, I will reply to your unvoiced question, which is implicitly concealed in your words, that any person can develop magical abilities, provided that he correctly locates the informational source that will nourish him and perhaps won't subjugate him to impossible conditions, conditions that will regulate this informational nourishment and maybe even use its presence for blackmail purposes. Unfortunately, blackmail is extremely common in various orders and cults. It has to do with the fact that someone who has even once experienced a sense of magical force will never forget it and is unlikely ever to give it up and will always look to keep it going and that, as you understand, could act as both a human strength as well as a human vulnerability.